demographic dividend, but it can soon become a liability. So it's encouraging to see that reforms are taking place as far as uh, government regulations, statutes, laws, um, the overall investment, so-called profile of the of the country is 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 reforming itself. But with that comes the added responsibility of ensuring that you have the capability of making the most of that money that's coming through. And that, I believe, again, can be best addressed with ensuring you've got the right human capital. And we need to continue to invest in our human capital. In fact, uh, the work that we do with CEOs around the world, and specifically in Asia and in India, human capital has been cited as a serious global challenge. Uh, in fact, number one uh, ch challenge for companies that operate within Asia. With a whole new model of employability ready to be unleashed, how would our enterprises need to adapt? One big shift I see, uh, even this decade, I think the number of women in the workforce is going to double, I think, in the next 15, 20 years. That's a significant change for India. This has already happened in America, it's happened in Europe. In India, it's not happened. I think the whole issue of a financially independent woman, a financially independent colleague, is a very different equation uh, at the workplace. And I think the workplace will be better for it. I think you'll see more women in the senior management ranks. You'll see more women in the boards. We already see a number of women on the boards uh, of banks in this country. I think you'll see more women on the boards. I think overall it's a good trend. While we speak of new opportunities for the up-and-coming young Indians and a whole new future for the Indian enterprise, what are the gaps that still need to be sealed? I think the biggest gap is, uh, which we keep talking about, is skill development. Because, um, I mean, just take the case of management, for example. They have over 3,000 management schools. But how many of them are actually quality schools? What is the kind of education that is being imparted to these people? What has actually happened is that after doing an MBA, which has become the flavor of the day, so to say, uh, they come out and get jobs which any person after the graduation would also get. There's a lot of, uh, you know, discontent uh, in students after they graduate from these B schools. And I think that's a very dangerous thing because unless we get our act together and you know, unless we get our education right, uh, instead of a demogra demographic dividend, we are going to end up with a huge problem on our hands because we'll have this lot of people who are unemployable and we wouldn't know what to do with them. We are heading, you know, we would probably head for a social unrest because unless you can skill them, unless you can educate them properly, unless you can get that degree phobia out of the minds of uh, people, I think we are uh, going to lose the advantage, uh, demographic advantage that we have been talking about and looking forward to. With its thought-provoking sessions, the 39th IMA Convention brought forth significant inputs from thought leaders across industry and business to give shape to the present and future roadmap for the changing Indian economic dynamics. The future of India promises to be an exciting space to watch. <laughs>